Hello, my name is Pete, aka Houseborn from Houseborn's World. Hello and welcome to the Ryzen 1700X build part 4, performance and overclocking. At the moment I've just got the cam software open and I just wanted to show you the default ambient temperatures uh, while the machine's not under load. At the moment it's 46, so that would be 26 degrees. So even at 50, it's, it's hovering between 26 and 30 degrees at idle. I've already overclocked the machine and we're running at 3.8 gigahertz across all cores. What I will do, I'm just going to minimise this and I'll show you what temperature we get under load, full load of the GPU and a fairly high load on the CPU. So if I just go and minimise this down, what I'm currently running is SETI at home and I'm using my CPU and GPU spare time to search for alien signals or unknown signals in the universe. So as you can see on the right hand side of the cam software the GPU load at the moment is fluctuating anywhere between 90 to 100 percent and the CPU is loading up to about 80% because in the settings I've only set it to run 80% or use 80% of the CPU. And as we can see temperatures are already in the region of 80 degrees. But remember we've got to take 20 degrees off. So we are in the 60 degrees touching just spotting below 60. Uh, the first thing I've done is overclock the graphics card and if I bring up the Sapphire Trick software I'm using to do the overclock you can see here that I'm running a GPU clock of 1140 MHz and a memory clock of 525 MHz. With the updated BIOS upon the graphics card I actually thought I was going to get more out of it but running the machine over the last few days I've been getting lots of Wattman errors and the Radeon Relive that I've been using to record the screen at times started corrupting videos. I started having more Wattman crashes to the point where it seemed corrupt to me. Whether that was down to the driver, I don't know. I noticed AMD released a new driver. So what I did, I've cleaned, installed the graphics drivers. As I want a consistent overclock, I'm looking at a voltage of 1.375, somewhere in that region to keep it safe. So, onto the overclock. As you can see here, we're only at 3800 MHz. I'd already bumped the memory up to 2933. And all I've done is just use the settings for the memory. I've not tried to tweak the memory at the moment because I've already looked online and saw that some people with the memory I've got haven't got it to run at 3200. I did select the 3200 MHz speed, got into Windows and I thought, oh, great, this has worked. It booted first time in Windows, now I've blue screen of death. So I come back in, knocked it back to 2933 and it's been running sound since. So if you go, if you want to do overclocking on the Asus Crosshair Hero 5, I should say, motherboard, if you go into the Extreme Tweaker and you'll have your overclocking presets. I didn't use the overclocking presets because that would have knocked back the UEFI boot that I'm currently running on. So what I've done, I changed the AI overclocker tuner to manual. I set a BCLK frequency of 100. I left the divider on auto, the custom course, sorry, custom CPU core ratio on auto. And then I put the CPU core ratio to 38. So 38 times 100 gives you 3800. Performance bias, I left on auto. The memory frequency, I selected 2933 because I know that that should run. The only other thing that I altered, actually I didn't alter, the CPU core voltage, you can see it's on 1.373 and it's on auto. Uh, I have heard to leave that, rec people have recommended to leave it on auto.
Setting 3.9 gigahertz in the BIOS. We've booted into Windows and at the moment it's running fine. Ambient temperatures are idle at 25 to 30 degrees. Not much dissimilar to the 3.8 gigahertz overclock, but the voltage is definitely up. Whereas before it sat at 1.375 or above, we're now at 1.395 to 1.4 volts. Um, I just want to see what will happen to the temperature if we put the machine under load. In a minute, we should hear the fans ramp up and the temperature will go up. Surprisingly, the CPU core voltage at the moment has dropped, but the temperature already, according to CAM software, has exceeded 80 degrees. I, to be honest, I don't know which temperature to believe. The dual intelligent processor 5, so I'm at 70, 71. The CAM software is reported above that. I've noticed this. Sometimes discrepancy about eight or nine degrees between the softwares. So if that's running at 71, 72, we need to take 20 degrees off that. So I can't believe that that's that low. That surprises me. And according to that, the voltage is 1.351 volts. So I would say at the moment 3.9's a runner. So I've just fired up hardware info just to give us a little more idea of what's going on. Now I believe that this software is not reporting the voltage correctly because this does what well, another bit of software I've got does and tells me that I'm running at 1.55 volts and clearly I'm not because it's reporting here we're at 1.351. But if I come down and the temperatures here are reporting the same as CAM software. They're reporting 85 degrees. This reading here does look like it's 20 degrees lower. So at the moment, the machine's running at 60 maximum, 66.9 degrees, which is high. It's going to be said it's high, but it's not dangerous. And same there, CPU core voltage 1.35, maximum's been running at 1.4. So at the moment, this 3.9 overclock seems quite safe to me. Um, because of the cooling I've got, temperatures don't seem to be fluctuating anywhere over what they're doing at the moment. It's higher than I want to run it for a long time, just until we get some more idea what's acceptable um i think what i might try try the four gigahertz and just see where that drops into i mean it might not even boot but we'll give it a try right so i'm just going to drop into the extreme tweaker we're going to set the core ratio to 40 And that's going to give us a target CPU speed of 4000 megahertz. So let's exit. Save changes and reset. Yep. So the machine's booted up fine. We're in Windows. Um, the ambient temperatures, if you want to just double check over here, you can see core clock 39907. So at 4, maximum has been 4 gigahertz. But what I would say is the temps have really shot up, <laughs> really shot up. So what I want to see, so the voltage is still stable, 1.395 volts. So it's still within that window. So for saying that, it's just gone up to 1.417. And... That's reporting a temperature of 61, 62 degrees. So that's 42 degrees at standard, which is high for the uh, cooling I've got, but it's runnable. What I'm actually going to do, so at the moment, I'm going to have minimal stuff running, and we're just going to try Cinebench at 4 gigs. Let's just see what happens, because this will really well stress the machine.
So this is a Fire Strike graphics test on 3D Mark. This is the machine at 4 gigahertz with the memory just under 3000 megahertz. I'm filming this because I don't want to run it, uh, film it through the Radeon software. So obviously that's going to have quite an impact on the machine. So I just wanted to run through this at its maximum clock. I'm not going to go over 4 gigs, although the chip might do for the moment until I get some more info on what's stable to run or not to run. I'm running the fire strike test because this is what I ran on my old machine. So this is a direct comparison from the processors stunkingly better than my old processor. Again, some slight tear in there. On to the next test. And we're nearly at the end. Here's the result. Hello and welcome to the final segment of the Ryzen 1700X build part 4 performance and overclocking results. So here I'm going to directly compare my old Phenom 2x4965 Black Edition process, processor against the new Ryzen 1700X. So on my first graph you can see the results from Cinebench R15. My old machine I used to run at a constant overclock of 3.5 GHz but just so I can compare apples against apples I've got the 965 Black Edition at 3.4 GHz and the Ryzen 1700X at 3.4 GHz. As you can see from the chart there's now a massive increase in single core performance but the multi-core performance of the Ryzen processor absolutely puts the old 965 Black Edition into the Dark Ages. Moving on from that, I've got the 3D Mark Fire Strike results and that was compared between the Black, 965 Black Edition and the Ryzen 1700X. As I used to run my old processor at 3.5, I thought it only fair to do the test as I used to run them before and against the Ryzen at its lowest possible uh, clock and as you can see the Ryzen does get a much better result but interestingly enough on the old 965 Black Edition the graphics score was just slightly higher perhaps that's showing that the drivers aren't quite optimised for the Ryzen system yet. Now I'm going to show you the memory overclocks comparison and again, I use Signbench R15 for this. So anyone who's running their Ryzen processor at the default 2033 MHz memory speed, you should really, if you're able to, look at bumping it up to as high as you can get it. Because as we can see, with the memory overclocked, just running at 3.4 GHz, you are going to get a big increase in performance. And... Because of how the processor works and the Infinity fabric that talks to the different uh, systems in the processor, the faster the memory is, the faster the processor can talk to itself. So the increase in memory is definitely beneficial. And as we can see there as well, a higher clock speed really does increase the performance of the Ryzen processor. So... This is again a comparison of the Ryzen 1700X at 3.4 GHz and then at 4 GHz with the higher memory clock and we can see the difference in the physics score is massively different and the fire strike score is slightly better as well. So in summary Obviously the Ryzen is clearly a substantial increase in performance over my, over my old Phenom processor. And just using Cinebench R15 and 3D Mark as a metric, because although they're not quite real world situations as such, 
we need a metric just to compare the performance and I actually worked out that in Cinebench compared to the old processor I got a 61% increase in single threaded performance and a 348% increase in multi threaded performance and in the 3D Mark Firestrike performance I got nearly a 40% increase so definitely I've made the right move in switching to the Ryzen 1700X processor and uh, can I just say if you've liked or enjoyed this Ryzen 1700X build series please like the videos and please subscribe it's free after all uh, your subscriptions will help me to do further videos in the future and if you have any comments or questions on the build please comment down below and can I just say thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one.